hello and uh, welcome to my youtube channel in this video we are going to discuss about pulse width modulation using stm32 f44 6re microcontroller this video is the first part of the pulse width modulation technique that will be used to control the devices connected to STM32 F44 6RE microcontroller board. So let's start the video without any delay. First of all, let us discuss what is pulse width modulation or in short, we call it PWM signals. By definition, pulse width modulation is a modulation technique used to encode a message into pulsing signals. So here in this technology or in this technique, we change the width of the pulses to control the power delivered to any particular load. Remember, we are using only the width of the pulse to deliver a different power to different loads. Let us try to go a bit deeper so that the things will get more clear. So in pulse width modulation, we try to change the duty cycle of a signal and duty cycle is generally given in percentage and it is calculated as time on period divided by total time period of the signal. So secondly, we change the frequency of the PWM signal depending on our requirement so basically a pwm signals two important factors or parameters are duty cycle and frequency and uh, we as we know that uh, frequency is nothing but the number of cycles per second and it is generally measured in hertz and this decides or determines how fast the pwm signal will switch between on and off state now the question will come to your mind where are these kind of signals used or what are their applications? Basically, this technique is used to control motors, speed of the motor, brightness of the LEDs, even for signal generation and apart from that, to, to modulate the sounds which are coming to the speakers. Now let us try to see how the PWM basically works. So the basic operation of PWM depends on two things. First is the frequency of the PWM signal or we can say how fast the PWM signal will switch between on and off state. Second, it depends on the ratio of on time period to the off time period or we can call it duty cycle. So basically there are two factors very important factors which controls the PWM signal. One is the frequency of the signal and second is the duty cycle of the PWM signal. By varying these duty cycles, we can change the average power delivered to any particular load. So let us try to understand what this particular line means. So here we can see the signals in terms of waveforms. So first of all, let us talk about DC signal. So any signal, if the magnitude of the signal remains constant throughout the time period, in that case, such signals are called DC signals. So if any signal's amplitude remains same with time, then we will call it a DC signal. So assume now we change this signal to a pulsating signal. In that case, the VDC RMS or DC RMS value of the voltage will be varied according to the duty cycle of the signal. So suppose if the duty cycle is 50%, that means 50% time it is on and rest of the 50% time it is off. Okay. 50% time if the signal is off. In that case, we will get 50% duty cycle. 
which will cause the average RMS value of the voltage to be just half of the peak to peak value of the square wave pulse. So by this we can modulate the DC RMS value. So let us take another example. If we decrease the pulse width to a very low value or we can say the duty cycle is very low 10% duty cycle. In that case the average DC RMS value also comes down and it reaches very close to zero values. Similarly if we increase the pulse width then in that case the DC RMS value will move towards the peak voltage or V positive. So by this we can see that by changing the duty cycle of the signal we can control the RMS DC value or we can say the average power which will be delivered to any load. Let us try to understand how the STM32 microcontroller generates the PWM signal. Generally STM32 microcontroller or any other microcontroller which has the facility of generating PWM signal are used because of their ability to integrate or the, their ability to have integrated timers and flexibility to program them to generate very precise PWM signals. So the key features of STM32 microcontrollers are they have multiple timers available with them. So using those timers we can generate multiple PWM signals with different duty cycles and different frequencies. Secondly we can configure these PWM signals at different mo output modes also. For example edge aligned PWM signals or center aligned PWM signals. What are the benefits of using PWM signal rather than using linear techniques? Using PWM signals we can efficiently and accurately control the power which will be delivered to any particular load and by that we can control the heat generated in the load. So by having a very efficient PWM signal we can restrict the heat which will be generated in a load. And second the precision that we can achieve using PWM signals. So these PWM signals duty cycle can be precisely varied depending on the facility available with the timers of the microcontroller and using that we can fine tune or fine control the overall output load power. What are the common components that are used in case of PWM signals to control the power delivered to any load for that we can use MOSFETs or BJTs to precisely control the power which will be generated or power which will be delivered to any particular load. So what are the calculations we have to keep in mind when controlling or generating PWM signals. First thing we must know the timer clock frequency. Basically microcontrollers are controlled or connected to a crystal oscillator which generates a particular very high frequency. These frequencies then are connected to the timer clocks and timers run at that particular speed. So for example if our timer is running at a speed of 64 megahertz then we can say the timer clock is configured at 64 megahertz or 64 into 10 to the power 6 hertz. Second we will have because this frequency is very high you can see here 64 megahertz is a very high frequency so we will have to first bring it down or lower the timer frequency 
for that we use prescalers and prescalers are nothing but a number which divides the timer clock frequency so the new timer frequency will depend on the value of prescaler and the equation is given by timer frequency divided by prescaler plus 1 why we are adding this one to the equation because the count starts from 0 therefore we are keeping an extra one with the prescaler value or if we rearrange this equation then we can get the prescaler's value for example if we were having a 64 megahertz clock which is connected to the timer then to bring down the timer frequency to 1 kilohertz we can calculate the prescaler value by using this equation free timer or frequency of the timer divided by new frequency of the timer minus 1 let us continue with the example so here we want to bring down the timer frequency to 1 kilohertz so prescaler value will be calculated as 64 megahertz divided by 1000 this 1000 is coming from 1 kilohertz that is 10 to the power 3 minus 1 so the prescaler value is 63999 we will note this number then we will have to calculate auto reload value okay and this value will be used to control the pwm signals frequency remember arr will be used to control the frequency of the pwm signal which is given by new timer frequency divided by arr plus 1 again this plus 1 is occurring here because we start the value from 0 so auto reload value sets the maximum count value before the timer resets of course after the maximum value of the timer the next value will be 0 or we can call it the timer is reset so suppose if we require a pwm frequency of 100 hertz okay then in that case we can rearrange this equation and get the value of arr which is given by the new timer frequency divided by pulse width modulation frequency minus 1 let us continue with the example so suppose we require a pulse width modulation frequency of 100 hertz and remember we have prescaled the value of the timer frequency and brought it down to 1 kilohertz so the arr value will be 1 kilohertz divided by 100 so 1 kilohertz is coming from the timer frequency and 100 hertz is the pwm frequency required by the user therefore arr is calculated and it comes out to be 9 we will note this number also then after that we will try to calculate capture control registers value or we can say capture capture compare register ccr remember ccr value is actually used to control the duty cycle of the pwm signal so auto reload value controls the frequency of the pwm signal capture compare registers value controls the duty cycle of the pwm signal and duty cycle is given by capture control registers value divided by auto reload value plus 1 multiplied by 100 why this 100 because duty cycle is generally calculated in percentage okay so we can rearrange this value to calculate the value of ccr which is given by the duty cycle required by the user divided by 100 multiplied by arr plus 1 we have already calculated the value of arr so depending on the duty cycle required we can calculate the value of crr let us continue with the example so suppose if we require 50 percent duty cycle and we have already calculated the value of arr then in that case 
कैप्चर कंपेयर रजिस्टर्स वैल्यू इज गिवन बाय 50 डिवाइडेड बाय 100 मल्टीप्लाइड बाय 9 प्लस 1 इट कम्स आउट टू बी 5 सो वी विल मेक नोट ऑफ दिस वैल्यू आल्सो यूजिंग दिस वैल्यूज वी कैन जनरेट पीडब्ल्यूएम सिग्नल विद डिफरेंट फ्रीक्वेंसीज एंड ड्यूटी साइकल्स नाउ लेट अस समराइज the examples that we have discussed first step that we have to remember is that we have to know the clock frequency which is provided to the timer second knowing this clock frequency we will have to find a prescaler's value and that prescaler's value will bring down the timer's clock frequency in our example we decrease the value of clock or timer clock from 64 megahertz to 1 kilohertz and the prescaler value calculated was 63999 after that we will have to calculate the value of auto reload register so this number is used to control the frequency of the pwm signal and we calculated the value and we got a value of 9 if we want a pwm frequency of 100 hertz knowing the value of arr we can calculate the value of capture compare register and it controls the duty cycle of the pwm signal remember arr is used for pwm frequency control ccr is used to control the duty cycle so for 50% duty cycle with a frequency of 100 hertz pwm signal the ccr will be 5 so let us visualize or visually and try to understand this concept so we have a very high speed clock connected to the timer or we can call it timer clock this timer clock is at a very high rate therefore we will have to bring it down to a lower rate for that we use prescalers the prescaler will divide the clock and bring it down to a prescaled signal then using the value of arr and ccr we can control the pwm signal's frequency and duty signal duty cycle and at the end we will get the required pwm signal now using these fundamentals how can we apply these fundamentals on stm32 f44 microcontroller to generate pwm signals the steps are very simple first configure the timer so select an appropriate timer peripheral use a prescaler to define the base frequency of the timer so or we can say reduce the clock frequency of the timer second we have to set the mode of the pwm and for that we can use either the mode 1 or mode 2 of the timers then we will have to set the value of auto reload register which decides or which determines the frequency of the pwm signal then we will have to configure the capture compare register present in the stm32 microcontroller or stm32 f44 6re microcontroller and by that value we can control the duty cycle of the signal then we will enable the timer and the timer will start generating the pwm signal and after that that pwm signal will be connected to a gpio pin which will deliver or with that which will control the power delivered to any load for that we will have to use alternate function of the gpio pin because pwm signal is not a normal function so we have to use the alternate function In on the GPIO pins, remember all the GPIO pins do not support PWM feature. So for that, you will have to go through the data sheet. 
check the GPIO pins which support PWM. Enable the alternate function. Configure the PWM and start the timer. This will generate PWM signals on the particular GPIO pin. With this, I would like to end the presentation or discussion. Thank you for watching this video. If you have not subscribed my channel, then I would request you to please subscribe the channel. Press the bell icon so that you will get the notifications as soon as I upload a new video. If you like this video, then you can click on the like button. If you have any suggestions or comments on this video, then please share your comments and suggestions in the comment section. Thank you and have a nice day.